Welcome to the fourth episode in the CD Vinyl Review Roundup. Lots of interesting genres, lots of interesting releases, let's get straight to it. First up is the original television soundtrack from the 1961 TV series Supercar. This one is from Silver Screen. If I could provide you with the soundtrack of my entire childhood, then it would be composed by the genius, and let me repeat that one more time with added emphasis, the genius of composer Barry Gray. When I watched the original UK TV production of Thunderbirds way back when, and heard Gray's music within the same, I realised for the first time how I could be dazzled and thrilled by music. His music. Barry Gray's name was etched onto my young heart. It's impossible to think of Thunderbirds without thinking of Gray. But I soon learned that Gray occupied more universes than those offered by the beautiful Thunderbird machines. This brilliant, although much earlier, children's TV series Supercar from 1961 was one of them. Flown by the jauntily monikered ex-test pilot Mike Mercury, this machine Marvel undertook daring rescue missions every week for 39 episodes in all environments with a notable support team, including Professor Popkiss, Mitch the Monkey, and many more. And all in Super Mario Nation, I might add. Presented in a gatefold featuring track notes, photos, and excellent liner notes, and secured by a thick paper band, the first pressing of this vinyl edition appears in sherbet lemon coloured vinyl. How delightful! Spanning two discs, the music covers the main theme plus music from a host of episodes. What Gray does here, and with his other works, was treat children with serious respect. He never composed down. He never patronised. He applied the same sort of creative effort to his work as he might for a triple A Hollywood film. This is a wonderful vinyl release, expertly produced and implemented, and nice mastering as well. You see, I think what hi-fi companies and record labels are doing now is they're just having a bit of a laugh, and they're sending me product with difficult to pronounce names, at least difficult for my poor little brain. And here's another one, and I'm going to give this a try. It's on the Nice Dreamer label, and it's by So George and Roger. So George and Roger. Let me know if it's wrong. It probably is. An intriguing vinyl release, this one, because it's been recorded direct to disc, with the final vinyl, final vinyl, contained in a soft plastic inner sleeve, which is a nice touch. I've been a supporter of this form of recording for quite some time, and have written a couple of contrasting features on the subject, which you can find below in the description. Watch out for the links down there. Hence, I was happy to see this technique used here via the Brazilian singer, guitarist and actor So Jorge. Hopefully I pronounced his name correctly, but probably haven't. If you're not quite sure where you've seen this guy before, but you look at his face and think, he looks familiar. Well, think. Netflix, and the programmes City of God, and also Brotherhood. He's been on there. Then there's Roger, of course, his compatriot on this LP, with the music stripped down to its production bare bones, and all the better for it as well. Both men tote guitar and vocals, but they're also joined by percussionists, whose names I can also not pronounce, but I'll have a stab. Poe Murray and Platino de Serena? Again, Probably wrong, and apologies all round. The seven original songs here vary in tempo and style, but the direct-to-disc vinyl recording method not only allows you to get to the core of the songs and their attendant performances, but it offers a naturalistic presentation with excellent clarity, an open and airy soundstage, and delightful detail. If you're partial to a slice of Milton Nascimento, get this vinyl edition now. It's brilliant stuff. Next up is Gary's Gang and the album Keep On Dancing from the UK audiophile label Demon. Originally released on the Sam label in 1978, this disco R&B band was best known for their hit single Keep On Dancing, based around a project created by Joseph Tucci and Gary Turnier. Their effort and talent was obviously funneled into the singles, because the other album tracks sound like filler. There's only six of those tracks too, extended to fill this vinyl's other task. 
This is an album to dance to, not think about. This is a good time release. You're not really supposed to dissect the lyrics here. It's not Blood on the Tracks or Dark Side of the Moon, for example. It's repetitive, derivative, and offers the worst in four to the floor beat monotony. But it's also a great party record. That's why you should buy this vinyl. Either that or to provide some sort of sampling source. This, in effect, is a specialist tool for a specialist task. In mastering terms, there's a little bit of emphasis around the mids and a slight hardening around the bass regions, but nothing to worry about. In fact, detail is honed a little because of it. Originally released by the legendary Manchester-based label Factory, this is an album from The Distractions called Nobody's Perfect 2020, and it's issued by Man in the Moon. This outfit initially issued a factory single in 1979. As the press release says, the band then signed up to Island Records. They were signed up along a band called U2, you may have heard of them, and they were signed up by the same guy on the same day in 1980. From that point, the two bands' futures separated slightly because this particular band, The Distractions, split in 1981. Heavily influenced by the Buscocks and guided in some respects by them, the songs sound distinctly 60s in nature. Late beat era, perhaps? Some tracks also add classic R&B garage overtones to that mix. It's a band that deserves more attention, though, because they knew their way around a groove. There's no doubt about that. If you like your rock laced with retro adornments, then check this one out, especially as it includes photography by the legendary Kevin Cummings with art design by the equally legendary Peter Saville. Snow Catches on Her Eyelashes is the unusual album title from Ivan Arsat and Jan Bang, on the Jazzland record label. Now, you'd think that a vinyl LP emanating from a record label called Jazzland would feature lots of, well, upright bass, the odd sax solo, and careful cymbal taps. But not here, old son. Think avant-garde electronica, of a Norwegian stripe. What you have here is a series of synth-based looped drones, sub-bass beats, and more synth content that tells the story. Featuring a mosaic of often meditative sounds and sampled with trumpet interspersed as small fragments, this down-tempo vinyl album provides intriguing rhythms and contemplative tones, plus melancholic piano for anyone interested in electronica. Now a slice of heavy rock from the New Zealand-based band written by Wolves, this album is called Secrets, and is from a label called Tenfold. I have to apologise to this band, actually, for the late review. This debut vinyl LP has been sitting in a tower of I'll Get Around It Tomorrow for about six months. But I got there, and thank goodness I did. A New Zealand band spouting a recipe of genres and subgenres into a sort of gumbo of hard rock and metal. Ultimately, I'd call this melodic rock, or pop rock, but with thrash and metal grammar, and classic rock and synth sprinklings, plus hair metal chrome bits on the front and the back. And then there's the high production values, the well-constructed songs, and the hooks. Ah yes, the hooks. I was humming along with Better Luck Next Time, and doing a little boogie in my listening chair in a few minutes of studious listening. This LP is, how do I say this, fun. Ignore the horrendous vocal introduction, though, which sounds like the first few minutes of a particularly bad Cher song, draped in exuberant vocal processing in the worst pop R&B hit-by-numbers tradition. If I could cut this one out with my Stanley knife, I would. Apart from that car crash, the rest of the album is truly excellent. High energy, full of life, and free from any restraint. This is melodic rock at its very best. On CD now, and Jean-Louis Matinier and Kevin Siddiqui on the ECM album, Rivage. Basically, um, acoustic guitar, and accordion, and pastoral, and peace, and reflection, and relaxation. I tell you, it took quite a while to write this review. Why? 
While I sat there in my chair and I listened, initially with my reviewer's face in a typically concentrated muse, notes were poised to flow. Then, after a minute or two, my brain relaxed, my concentration wandered, my head slowly turned to a nearby window, I gazed and pondered as guitar strings were plucked and an accordion swam around my meditation. Thoughts drifted in and out of my head, accompanied by analogue instruments. And then, seemingly three minutes later, the entire album had finished, all 40 minutes of it. I suddenly woke from my reverie and looked at the screen of my laptop. Blank. Not one word. Nothing at all. Which is the biggest compliment that I can give to this album. This is not an album that demands a technical appreciation, although the level of musicianship is way up there. The instrumental skill on display is actually superb, sure, but how do you fight a track like Après Le Plou, which quietly says, everything's gonna be fine, just take it easy, don't worry, you'll be okay, yet does so within a cloak of melancholia. How can you be analytical when an album washes over you like the tide on a beach of a desert island paradise? And hey, I've told you nothing about the performers, have I? No biog, no personality notes. And you know what? You're not getting any either. Who really cares? Just listen. Bobby Lewis next with Mumbling, Tossing and Turning from the UK audiophile label Jasmine. The CD title actually references two different songs. The Tossing and Turning bit, well, that refers to his 1961 hit single that sat in the charts for 23 years weeks. It sold 3 million copies and hit number one in the process. And it's that song that defines Lewis as a star name. But this guy is more than just a one-hit wonder. Before that, he worked with the Leo Hines Orchestra and then released a well-regarded high-energy single on chess, then Spotlight. And that was called Mumbles Blues, Mumbles being the other bit of this CD title. Now, Mumbles Blues is a bit of an issue nowadays, if you think about it and if you listen to the lyrics carefully. Why? Well, it sounds like a joke song that unfairly pokes fun at a poor girl who's less than articulate. But in fact, this is extraordinarily bad PC because this unfortunate girl is actually quite deaf. Cringe? Oh yes, not a song that would be released these days, I reckon. But hey, such were the times. In style, Lewis was a well, part blues shouter and part gospel vocalist who worked hard to achieve local success. He was picked up by Mercury and Roulette, appeared at the Apollo Theatre, picked up by King. He was all over the place, but he was on an upward curve. Problem was, Lewis's talents didn't change, but the quality of the material in his possession did. You can hear the variation in song quality on this intriguing CD, which bounces from solid ditties like the title track and dubious novelties like Fire of Love, where the water sound effects are as important as Lewis's voice. A fascinating snapshot of musical history and one that any R&B fan should grab with gusto. A reissue of Five Live Yardbirds 1964 from the UK audiophile label Repertoire. Recorded live at the Marquee Club on the 7th of August 1964 and featuring Eric Clapton, this recording shows the band at their early peak and represents one of the most important British rock releases of the early 60s. This Digipack edition has been nicely and newly remastered by E-Rock and includes a 16-page booklet written by the Ugly Things magazine founder Mike Stacks with contributions from surviving band members. The full lineup features Eric Clapton on lead guitar, Chris Dreja on rhythm guitar, Paul Samuel Smith on bass, Jim McCarty on drums, and Keith Relf on vocals and harmonica. The performance includes Chuck Berry's Too Much Monkey Business, Howlin' Wolf's Smokestack Lightning, Sonny Boy Williamson's Good Morning Little Schoolgirl, and as the saying goes, much, much more. 
One of the charms of this release is the between song banter, which only adds atmosphere and a sense that you're part of an occasion. This rather relaxed element of the production is a welcome one. Those large gaps where chatter and guitar tunings are just part of the fun tend not to be heard in more modern live recordings, where content tends to be crammed into the grooves instead of what should be prioritised, the actual occasion. That is, a live album should be all about the moment in time and not a Spotify playlist. This album production got it right. Another Yardbirds release and another one from Repertoire. This is a three CD set called Live of the BBC Revisited. Actually, I'm going to give you this BBC set and then a little bonus at the end, so watch out for that. This BBC set arrives in a dual case and features recordings from 1964 to 1968, including performances from Eric Clapton, Jimmy Page and Jeff Beck, spanning 69 tracks and three CDs. Now there's a whole host of BBC related classic radio shows here, including the Saturday Club, a whole thing going on, Top Gear with John Peel, the BBC's recording of the Jazz and Blues Festival, a show that was simply called You Really Got, dot dot dot, the Beat Show, the Sound of Boxing Day, Saturday Swings, and of all things, Joe Loss's Pop Show, including the complete final BBC session featuring White Summer and Dazed and Confused. The included booklet includes contributions from original Yardbirds members Jim McCarthy and Paul Samwell Smith. BBC recordings of this type and time period tend to be sadly compressed, bright in the mids and rather harsh in the treble, but kudos to the mastering here, which does its level best to produce a quality output, even from those recordings that sound inherently a little rough and ready in terms of detail and clarity. And now that little extra I promised you, this one from the Yardbirds lead singer, Keith Ralph. This particular CD is called Solo Recordings and Collaborations, 1965 to 1976. Also from repertoire, it arrives in a digipack format and looks at the man's solo work and in collaboration with fellow Yardbird Jim McCarty and his sister, Jane Ralph. It includes 10 previously unreleased demos from Keith's personal tape archive, along with rare tracks by Together. This was the duo he formed with McCarty in 1968, and then his 1966 solo singles. There's plenty of interesting stuff here, actually, that shows other sides of Ralph, apart from the blues and R&B frontman that many will be familiar with. There are melodic and sensitive pop songs here, pastoral folk, crafted psychedelia and early prog. I for one will miss the man because judging from this document, there are decades of exquisite songs that have been lost to us all, which is all the more reason to treasure what we have here. Next up from the UK label Grapefruit, we have The Idol Race and the album The Birthday Party. Purveyors of pop and psych, this band's life ranged from 1966 to around 1972. As an entity, the band itself didn't have the best of times and never really took off, despite hanging around for some time. Many of the band members did take off, well, in career terms at least. They included a certain Jeff Lynn, and my goodness he does look rather fresh-faced here. Also, Roy Wood, while a later incarnation of the band would transform into the Steve Gibbons band. Even the drummer Roger Spencer would himself transform into one Ollie Spencer, a very successful stand-up comedian. It's no surprise that with Lynn and the band, this album has a definite Beatles pop presentation and early ELO-esque series of sounds. Plus, according to Lynn, George Formby. In fact, speaking of the Beatles, Idol Race actually popped into Abbey Road and witnessed the making of the White Album for all of whew, 10 minutes before they were thrown out again. 
The songs on the Birthday Party album are beautifully melodic, always well crafted and arranged with hooks aplenty. Lynn was the youngest member of the band when the LP was released and so he was pushed forward to add a sense of the hip and trendy. Despite the lack of success, this is a lovely LP, full of fun and frolics, great songs and energy. It's a great little album. The original stereo album is joined here by alternative versions, standalone singles and the first ever official CD release of the original substantially different mono version of the LP, taken from the original masters. Now this album originally was released by the record label called Liberty and I hope the person at Liberty who thought that this pathetic sleeve art was going to sell records for the band was sacked because the only outfits this sleeve promotes is Hallmark. Covering the complete Keen years from 1957 to 1960, this is a box set from Sam Cooke and I should note issued on the Abco record label. As for the man, well goodness gracious he had a pure voice indeed. You could use his voice alone to test the clarity of your hi-fi. He's also the only singer I know who can take the irritatingly schlocky sweet sugary nonsense of a song like Tammy, a hit for actor the late Debbie Reynolds, and turn it into something listenable. That my friends is how genius works. The smooth soul from Cook is well documented here in five CDs, each contained in a card sleeve with a soft plastic inner, something I wholly approve of. That lot is pushed into a pizza style box to be gently lifted from the box with the addition of an internally fitted ribbon. This is a luxury set and no mistake. The albums themselves, well there's the self titled 1958 release, there's another one from the same year called Encore, a 1959 release tribute to the lady and also Hit Kit from the same year and from 1960 The Wonderful World of Sam Cooke. There's also 15 bonus tracks here too while the tracks have been sourced directly from recently recovered original master tape reels. And guess where they were found? Yes, in an old aircraft hangar. Why not? And yes, they sound lovely. And that's me done folks. Thank you very much for staying to the end and also for supporting me on this channel. Also check out the description below which has a host of links including my Patreon page, Facebook group, website. There's all kinds of stuff down there. Also if you want to buy any of the albums I've just mentioned I will put links below directly to Amazon and you can grab them for yourself. Until the next video and I hope you will join me then. Bye bye for now.